Hello, welcome to our Section 2 notes on Unit 2. This section is called The Crossing, and we're going to talk about one particular event of the American Revolution, and uh, in my personal opinion, probably the most critical 24-hour period uh, in our nation's history. Now, I know that um, that's probably something that can be debated by a lot of different people, but I think that what we talk about in this section, if this had not happened uh, pretty much exactly as we talk about it, um, there's a very real possibility that the United States would not have existed. So we're going to talk about this today, and uh, we'll do some uh, different activities and uh, things that go along with the notes, but wanted to give you kind of a background uh, of the crossing first. Now, as we've kind of talked about already, the first year of the war is uh, really tough for Washington's men. 1776 is not uh, full of lots of lots of uh, victories for Washington. In fact, uh, quite a few defeats, almost all of, all defeats, uh, major losses in New York. Um, they were tr uh, chased across the Delaware River into Pennsylvania. Um, lots of uh, people are doubting Washington and his leadership skills. Uh, so a lot of things are going wrong at this point for Washington. Uh, many people even are talking about whether or not Washington should be in charge of the Continental Army. Uh, many people in Congress, uh, a lot of top advisors, are really questioning whether or not this is the right person to lead the army. Um, he's basically moving his army around, avoiding a lot of uh, different conflicts with the British. And as we've already talked about a little bit, this is, this is by design. This is what Washington feels is going to give his troops the uh, greatest opportunity to win uh, eventually. Um, but Washington definitely wants to choose exactly when they're going to attack and where they're going to attack. So um, as we get towards the end of 1776, uh, things are not looking great. In fact, Washington even writes a family member, and uh, this is a, a quote from Washington in the letter. He says, I think the game is about up, meaning that he thinks that this is about the end for him and his army. Now, when Washington's men enlist in the, uh, the Continental Army, they enlist for one year of service. And their year is going to end at the end of the calendar year, okay? So this is critical for this event to kind of understand why uh, this is important because all enlistments for the Continental Army are going to be up on December 31st, 1776. At that point, okay, on January 1st of 1777, his men have a choice to make. They can either stay and like re-up for another year with the Continental Army or they can say, I've had enough, and they can go home and be completely done with the Continental Army. So Washington at this point, as we get to kind of like mid-December, he really needs to do something to convince them or give them some kind of hope that they should stay with him. All right. Now, uh, a lot of the men have respect for Washington, um, but in reality, if you're fighting a war, you're not winning any battles, you're low on supplies, things look like the war is possibly going to unravel here very quickly. Um, for a lot of people, this is not going to be a tough decision as they get to the start of 1777. So the pressure's on. Washington has to do something to convince his men and give them hope to stay. So Washington decides to make a very bold move at this point. Okay, He is going to attack the British. Now when I say attack the British, he is going to technically attack the Hessians. Um, but as we talked about with mercenaries before, the Hessians are representing the British. Okay, So Washington is going to make a very bold move in attacking the Hessians and being the aggressor instead of being the army that is constantly kind of pushed and chased as as has they have been uh, for most of 1776. So this is the plan. Washington plans to cross the Delaware River at night under the cover of darkness and then make a surprise attack on the Hessians at the town of Trenton. Okay. Now to give you a little bit of kind of some numbers here, uh, Washington has about 2,400 soldiers and the Hessians have about 1,500 soldiers. Now when we look at this map, and we kind of talk about where we're at here, this is where it sometimes gets confusing because a lot of times as we talk about crossing the Delaware, um, people get confused and think that they're somehow involved in the, uh, the state of Delaware, but technically Washington's men are up here, okay? So they're up here, uh, they're in the state of Pennsylvania, all right, they're going to cross the Delaware River, okay, so right here they're going to cross the Delaware River, they're going to come up here, and then they're going to cross uh, down about nine miles or so. They're going to march into the city of Trenton. 
Now once they get to this point, they're going to go into two different groups here, and they're going to attack Trenton, hopefully in the very, very early morning hours. Um, Washington is hoping that it'll be dark when they attack, um, so it's going to be a complete surprise attack on the Hessians here at Trenton. So again, the town that they are attacking is Trenton, New Jersey, but it's basically completely uh, the home base at this point of the uh, Hessian soldiers. All right. Now again, this is about a nine mile march. So they're going to have to try and cross the river, get everybody across, cannons, some horses, things like that, and then they're going to have to come down and march about nine miles. Okay. Um, here's a picture looking from the Pennsylvania side over to the New Jersey side at roughly the place where the crossing uh, happened. Um, I took this picture oh, probably about, I think it was about 2009 or so, when I visited this uh, state park in Pennsylvania. Um, the river has probably changed a little bit um, geographically from uh, the time period, but that kind of gives you a visual on exactly how far the crossing is going to take place. Now I have had students in the past ask me, Mr. Langhorst, um, why did they not take the bridge that's on the right side of the picture. Well, the bridge was not there in 1776. There was no bridge uh, across the Delaware River at this point. That is a, a modern day bridge that's put in place there. Now, one of the key elements of this attack is that it's going to take place on the morning of December 26th, 1776. So they're going to make the crossing across the river uh, the night or the evening of Christmas Day. So, you know, there's some definite strategy here. Um, they're going to try and surprise the Hessians uh, the day after Christmas. Um, you know, if you can think about kind of maybe what you do on Christmas, you know, maybe you have a, a big meal and you kind of relax a little bit and, you know, either have family or friends or play some games or just kind of chill out or whatever. So a lot of times the day after Christmas, that's probably a day you might kind of sleep in a little bit. You're not going to have your regular routine. And so that is definitely what Washington is, you know, kind of thinking in his head. Okay, we're going to cross on Christmas night, catch them, the ultimate element of surprise. Um, there have been some different legends and stories about how um, when this event actually takes place that the Hessians are um, hung over and they've been drinking and stuff like that. And uh, in reality, there's really no history uh, that supports that claim that they were drunk and hung over and all that kind of stuff. Um, but again, it is the element of surprise that it's the day after Christmas that this will take place. Now, to complicate things, and in fact, in many ways, um, actually, um, well, not in many ways, but in some ways, help uh, Washington and his men, there is a huge blizzard this night, okay? It's frigid cold. Um, it starts to rain a little bit. Then the rain turns to sleet. Then the sleet turns to snow. So as Washington and his men are crossing the Delaware River, there's this driving, blowing blizzard happening. Now, the reason why I say that in some ways that's a good thing is that the Hessians have patrols out, but in many cases they pulled those patrols back because the weather was so bad. Um, there were spies and people telling uh, Colonel Rawl and the Hessians in Trenton, hey, Washington's moving his men. I think they're going to attack. And on numerous occasions, Rawl says, ah, there's no way. There's no way that the, the Americans could attack. You know, there's a driving blizzard going on. They'd have to be crazy uh, to do that in this weather. Um, but they are crazy enough to do it. Okay, so they're crossing the Delaware River, bl blizzard, driving snow, and then they're going to march nine miles in this driving blizzard uh, to get to uh, the city of Trenton. And here's an illustration of what it might have looked like there as Washington is getting his troops ready. Now, this picture is interesting because it shows you that, um, you know, not only are they going to have to try and get men across, but they're also going to get these cannons across. So these cannons, which in some cases are still some of the same artillery that Henry Knox has captured and brought back from Ticonderoga, they're going to put them on platforms on top of these boats, and that's how they're going to get them across the river. Now here's one of the uh, the taverns there at the uh, location. This is supposedly one of the places where Washington and his men uh, may have met that night, made final plans, uh, possibly decided some final details, and this is a place where you can take a tour and go into the building. And when I was there uh, several years ago, I did go inside. They won't let you take pictures inside, but it was pretty powerful for me because when I was in there, you know, I kept thinking, gosh, this could be the actual room 
where uh, a lot of these decisions were made. Now, modern day historians kind of debate whether or not this was where they did that or if they did that in a private house because there were quite a few homes that Washington would take over and his men would meet in and stuff. This was actually one of the, the inns uh, right on the river there. So there's a chance they may have met here, um, but we'll probably really uh, never know. Now I wanted to show you this picture because this is what the boats looked like that they used for the crossing. And we're going to do some things later where we'll kind of um, investigate a little bit more about the activity. But um, you can see the size of the people here. Okay, so these are adults. And you can see the size of these boats. These boats are used to carry iron ore or rock uh, down the river and they used them uh, um, for different things with like metal works and stuff. So these are some really heavy duty boats. They're very wide. Uh, they're very sturdy. Uh, they're they're made for basically filling you know filling up with rock uh, and using the iron ore and then getting it down to a place where they can smelt it and stuff. So these things are going to be uh, be large. It's not like you're just taking a little rowboat across. Now Washington and his men had confiscated all the boats that they could find along the Delaware River. So um, they believed that they had access to and had possession of basically every boat that you could find for miles around on the Delaware River. Now you might want to ask, you know, why are these here today? This is obviously a modern day picture. Uh, each year on the anniversary of the crossing at this particular state park in Pennsylvania, they recreate it. So they put a bunch of re uh, reenactment uh, people together and they go across uh, the river just like they would. And these are some of the boats that they use. So as far as historical accuracy, this is as close as we can possibly get today to what these boats looked like. And then I took a picture kind of looking inside. Um, a person would actually be kind of like standing in there, but you can get an idea for how thick these things are. Um, you know, the, the wall of the boat itself is about, you know, a foot, foot and a half thick. So these are very sturdy boats. So what happens when Washington and his men cross? Um, even though it takes them a lot longer to cross than they plan, they do come into a Trenton with an element of surprise. Most of the element surprise though is not um, because it's dark because by this time they've missed that window and now it is daytime but remember there's a driving snow storm happening and so they don't have some of the sentries out and some of the guards out that they typically have. So Washington and his men have the ultimate element of surprise and uh, the Americans in the entire Battle of Trenton only, only lose two men and uh, both of those happen during the march from frostbite and uh, exposure to cold. Okay? Uh, five of Washington's soldiers are wounded, but they don't lose anybody in the actual battle as far as a casualty. Now, if you remember the numbers there, we said there were about 2,400 patriots, and the Hessians had about 1,500 men um, in Trenton. And here's an example of kind of maybe what it might have looked like there in Trenton. Again, it's kind of like they're attacking a town because um, that's where the Hessians are at, is they're in town. They kind of move outside uh, into one of the meadow areas kind of nearby, um, but the, uh, the bulk of the attack is done right there in the town of Trenton. We did talk about the uh, Hessians and uh, their, their uniform, their headwear, um, those kinds of things. You can kind of see that in this painting as well. So we mentioned that they had 1,500 Hessians. The Hessians have 22 soldiers killed, 83 wounded, and then the vast majority of them surrender, about 896 according to one account. I've also seen accounts that say uh, around 1,000 Hessian surrender. Um, of course, it does not total up to 1,500. Some Hessians did escape. They escaped back across the river, um, or not, not the Delaware River, but another river, and then uh, they kind of uh, moved away from the battle. So there were some that did escape, but overall, the vast majority were, uh, were captured as prisoners of war, or they were wounded uh, and killed. So this is a huge momentum swing for Washington. Washington and his men get supplies. Uh, they were low on all kinds of things from clothing and food and stuff like that. So all the different things that they can confiscate from the uh, Hessians, they take into their possession. They also get quite a few cannons, which are going to be helpful so that they can use that artillery. Uh, but most of all, probably they get confidence. You know, this is literally days before they're going to have to make a decision. Should I go home and quit? Or not quit, but should I go home and, you know, no longer be a member of the Continental Army? Or should I re-enlist for another year? So this is a huge confidence boost. 
Now, you might think, well, this is a big victory. Washington's going to be able to kind of rest on this for a little bit. But Washington then even ratchets up the surprise element again, and just a couple days later follows up the attack on Trenton with an attack at uh, Princeton, New Jersey, and wins another battle, this time fighting against uh, some of the uh, British soldiers. So Washington goes from not winning any battles in 1776 to, in the last couple days, um, going ahead and winning two battles. Now, the battle at Princeton is interesting because it takes place on December 31st. So Washington is again asking his men to cross the Delaware um, and then go back and attack in another location, and they're going to do so on the night that they're the, basically their last night of enlistment unless they sign up again. So Washington is really rolling the dice here on trying to get a, a couple of victories to convince his men to stay. And here's one of the pictures of the attack on Princeton as far as the uh, map here. Give you kind of an idea of the Delaware River, Trenton, and then over here uh, is Princeton. So it's in kind of the general same area, but a little bit different. Um, Washington and his men kind of do a surprise attack. Oops, do a surprise attack and come back around and attack uh, Princeton from uh, the south. Now, I show you this picture because this is probably one of the more iconic pictures in American history. Um, this is a, a picture just usually simply referred to as uh, Washington crossing the Delaware. There's lots of things that are incorrect about this picture, and we'll kind of do that in a separate activity. But it is a very iconic picture. It's a very uh, a large picture. Um, the original is like 150 inches in height by about 255 inches across. Um, so we're talking almost like 20 feet across. And it was done by a German painter uh, in 1850, 1851. So this was painted many, many years afterwards. Obviously, the painter uh, was not there. I guess it'd be possible the painter was there, but the painter was not at the crossing. Um, this is a, a great, iconic painting, but again, it's one of those things that's not really historically accurate. It's made mostly just kind of as like this motivational, uplifting piece instead of being a technically uh, factual uh, piece of artwork. So here's another copy of that, maybe a little bit easier to see there. But there's all kinds of things about the size of the boat and, you know, whether it was dark or not. Obviously, you don't see a driving snowstorm. Um, whether or not Washington could even stand up in the boat like that. Um, the flag that's in the picture didn't actually exist at that point in history. Um, so there's all kinds of things that aren't really correct about this painting. But, again, very iconic. Um, when the state of New Jersey decided what to put on their commemorative quarter uh, several years ago, they decided to put a uh, kind of a relief of uh, the crossing here on the uh, quarter. So gives you an idea of how much uh, they place an emphasis on it. Um, this is a far side comic, Washington crossing the street instead of crossing the Delaware. So kind of a little bit of a joke there. And again, Washington uh, crossing the Delaware. Put your cell phones on vibrate. And then this is one of my favorites because I use Twitter all the time. Hang on, I got to tweet this as they're crossing the Delaware. So again, very iconic figure, or very iconic picture. Um, I took this picture when I was at the uh, State Park. It's kind of interesting. It says, uh, near this spot, Washington crossed the Delaware on Christmas night, 1776, the eve of the Battle of Trenton. So uh, for me, this was one of those locations that I really, really wanted to visit uh, in my lifetime, and I was able to um, when I was doing some stuff in Philadelphia several years ago. Um, but to me, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is probably, I think, um, one of the most important 24-hour periods in our history because, you know, think about what would have happened if uh, Washington's army just a couple days later would have decided, you know, I no longer want to be a part of this and uh, they would have gone home or, you know, what if they attacked at Trenton and uh, it wouldn't have quite been the surprise they expected and the Hessians would have been able to uh, slaughter Washington's troops. Uh, the war possibly would have been over at that point. So um, a lot of things had to go exactly right for Washington to be able to pull this off, and they did. Uh, so, so I ask you, as we come up on uh, Christmas, I know uh, many of you guys are, are very busy on Christmas and all kinds of family stuff. When I started to really research this a lot, um, as I started to teach, 
it's one of those things where on Christmas Day, I always kind of think about this just a little bit on Christmas night, you know, um, you know, doing stuff with the family or doing whatever. Um, but it always seems like ever since I started to really read about this, there's some there's some really good books about this topic. If you guys are interested, let me know and I'll uh, suggest a couple. But I've always kind of thought about Washington um, on Christmas night um, and just kind of thought about, gosh, what would it have been like to be in his army and um, have him explain, hey, this is what we're going to do. And most of the guys were probably like, this is the craziest idea I've ever thought of. We're going to surprise the Hessians. This is, you know, Washington thinks all that's going to happen, but it's, it's crazy. It's going to be almost impossible to pull off and then to be able to do it. And uh, for Washington to not lose a single man in the battle, and again, they lost two people on the march there, but to not lose any individual soldiers in this battle against the Hessians was like a, a miracle. Okay, So that's a little bit about uh, Washington crossing the Delaware and the attack on uh, Trenton. And uh, we'll do some activities with this, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick background on it. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, we'll move on to the uh, next section and uh, continue talking about the American Revolution.